गुड इवनिंग प्रसन्न गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सिंस जॉइनिंग नाउ देयर वाज 12 नाउ इट्स 30 शैल वी स्टार्ट शो गुड इवनिंग व्हाट आई कैन वेट फॉर अनदर वन और टू मिनट्स व्हाट डू यू वांट मी टू डू now it's increasing and now it's 30 the participants we'll start because uh, we have only one hour okay good right uh, good evening uh, everyone all the gps and uh, the professionals are welcome to the meeting uh, my good friend prasan appa my batchmate now he's a, a consultant uh, jmo worked first in uh, bahunia uh, general hospital then uh, now uh, he is in uh, matale general hospital soon he will be tomorrow he is appointed to jmos office uh, kalambu so he has been uh, talking about this uh, uh, judicial uh, medical points and uh, the things that we missed all the time when he make me even uh, ask me uh, he can do a session for all the gps and uh, let us update our knowledge on Uh, judicial practices so what the mistakes we make or sometimes the things that we do not uh, attend and the things that we attend without much appreciation about the judicial practice so uh, prasanna it's uh, over to you for the updates uh, thank you asit uh, i had a discussion with asita today in the morning and uh, i even told him that um, i am in the process of uh, writing a review article on uh, a guide to gp on death certification so in the meantime i thought of uh, uh, giving you some insights on death certification so only on uh, thinking of two issues we sometimes see uh, some deaths which should have not been given a death certificate are given by gps that is one that we see the other one is some deaths where a gp can give a death certificate are not given and uh, the body is sent to the jms office so i thought of uh, giving you some insights on death certification and we will discuss uh, any other matters asita uh, so in this uh, there are few objectives that i highlighted i want to discuss uh, when a gp can give a, a, a cause of death uh, when a gp has to refer to a, a coroner or to an isd whether a gp can charge money for death certification uh, can a gp refuse death certification and uh, we will discuss uh, difficulties and doubts encountered by gp on death certification now medical death uh, medical certification of death is frequently issued uh, certificate by a government employed medical practitioner or general practitioner now death certificates are issued by the hospital they are government employed medical practitioners and the uh, general practitioners for registering a death the identity of the disease date and time of death and cause of death are to be provided in the medical certificate of cause of death so these components are very important the identification identity of the deceased how you uh, write the name in the uh, death certificate how you uh, indicate the date and time of death and the cause of death when these details are not available death cannot be registered so if you are going to send details to the uh, birth and death registrar if these details are not available they cannot register it such as the cause of death uh, date and time of death or the identity providing these details is not difficult task for a gp 
when the death is one of the GP's patients and suffering from a known disease who dies and attended by the GP. So usually GPs know about their, usually they know about the patient and they know about their past medical history and they have a good rapport with the patient. So it's not a difficult task for them. <clears throat> Underreporting of deaths by GP to the ISD has significant implication on identification of preventable deaths. Some of these, as I told you early, some of these deaths are not uh, reported to corona. It undermines the safeguards to the society provided by the inquest procedure to recognize those deaths that should be reported for further investigation. GP may be failing to bring certain categories of cases to attention of ISD because of misconception of their medical legal responsibilities. So that is why we want to, uh, uh, this is my intention of having this lecture so that GPs can be educated and to prevent underreporting of deaths. Now, if you look at the laws related to medical death certification, there are three laws that a GP should know. One is Birth and Death Registration Act. The other one is Inquest Law. The other one is Medical Ordinance. Now, this is the Birth and Death Registration Act. So, if I read carefully, so in this law, it says if uh, a patient is being attended by a doctor during his last illness, he has to issue a certificate uh, which should be in duplicate and uh, he can state the cause of death best of his knowledge and belief. And uh, he cannot uh, charge a fee for that. So they say it should be issued without fee or reward. Uh, so those are the main components that are in the Birth and Death Registration Act. Now, if you look at uh, now... Sri Lanka Medical Council issued a guideline for the medical practitioners on issue of medical certificates. In this guideline, there is a component of death certification. And also recently, Ministry of Health issued a handbook for Sri Lankan doctors on cause of death certification in 2021. That is mainly on deaths in the healthcare facilities. However, there is no guideline issued to general practitioners on medical certification of cause of death on home deaths in Sri Lanka. So if you look at the guideline issued by Sri Lanka Medical Council, you would uh, see five components. To issue a medical certificate of cause of death, a general practitioner should know the cause of death. And the cause of death should be natural. Uh, and also, the person or the doctor who is issuing the medical certificate of cause of death should attend to that patient and he should attend to his last illness which had led to the death and on the component 4 it says the doctor has to treat the disease recently and finally the doctor has to weave the body. We will discuss each component later. 
so what is what is now to give a cause of death the first component is cause of death should be known now if you look at the birth and death registration act it says medical practitioner is expected to state the cause of death to the best of his knowledge and belief now they are not expected to be incapable of being wrong now uh, whatever the cause of death that is uh, that is uh, written can be wrong now what is what we generally do is in a home death uh, if you look at their past medical history the diagnosis card uh, the clinic records whatever the disease that the patient has which was incompatible incompatible with his life we give as cause of death uh, considering the circumstances for that the certifying gp should also have access to relevant medical records and the results of investigations of the disease to arrive at cause of death so the G gp should know the cause of death if the gp does not know the cause of death he cannot certify the, he cannot give a medical certificate of cause of death he should refer to the coroner now i have given you three scenarios we will discuss each now if you look at the scenario 1 42 year old 42 year old previously healthy farmer developed a retrosternal chest pain while working in the paddy field the farmer became unresponsive while on the way to the gp the farmer had taken treatment from a from the gp for knee pain recently now in this case uh, since i know asita i will ask this question from you asita if you look at this scenario do you know the cause of death in this case no because i have treated for separate um, ailment this farm comes with uh, probable mi yes and so i can't give the cause of death according to the slmc guidelines good now he one thing is he was previously healthy and he had retrosternal chest pain now there are many causes for retrosternal chest pain one possible the most common possibility is the ischemic heart disease but we do not know this cause of death so and the gp had treated him for a knee pain so there is no diagnosis card no clinic records of a significant illness so we cannot give a cause of death in that case scenario 2 69 year old known patient with hypertension and congestive cardiac failure developed increased shortness of breath the patient became unresponsive while on the way to the gp his previous echocardiography done showed left ventricular hypertrophy. What do you think, Asita? Because the GP knows the history and uh, the patient has been uh, regular follow-up, we can give the course of death. Yeah, and uh, you have an echocardiographic evidence of hypertensive heart disease. Yes. Isn't that so? Yes. So, you have some evidence that he had a significant illness that could cause the death so the other one known patient with breast carcinoma is on chemotherapy the investigation showed metastatic deposits over the lungs the gp was managing uh, the patient's reduced loss of appetite and reduced oral intake and patient became unresponsive at home can you give a cause of death in this case yes yes so uh, there is a diagnosis of uh, carcinoma of the breast which is which has uh, secondaries and you have all the symptoms that so you know a cause of death in this case but we will discuss further okay <clears throat> so 
Now, it is true that, um, so we will discuss. However, the cause of death can be subjected to legal scrutiny in medical legal deaths. So the opinion given by the medical practitioner may fail to withstand the acid test of cross-examination. That could result in doubts being raised about the professional competence of the medical practitioner. Thus, the correct diagnosis of cause of death by medical practitioner is of utmost importance. Sometimes uh, <clears throat> the probable cause of death that a GP can GP gives may end up in an autopsy. Sometimes the relatives may request an autopsy. Sometimes the police may request. In that case, if you do not give a proper uh, probable cause of death, so that there, uh, there can be doubts raised about your diagnosis. That's why we say we need to give, we need to try to give the correct cause of death in uh, medical death certification. So if a GP knows the cause of death, the GP can issue a medical certificate of cause of death, uh, which is B12 form. Now, if, if the GP does not know the cause of death, he cannot issue the uh, B12 form. And uh, according to the inquest law, I will discuss about the inquest law further in the latter part. In the inquest law, there are few instances where you have to uh, request an inquest. So one uh, instance is where you do not know the cause of death. So if you know the cause of death, you can issue a medical certificate cause of death. If you do not know the cause of death, then you have to uh, ask for an inquest. Now, the second, now out of these five components of the uh, Sri Lanka Medical Council uh, death certification, uh, the uh, circular or the guideline, the second component is you should, the cause of death should be natural. If I uh, give you an example, imagine an intracerebral hemorrhage. Now, intracerebral hemorrhage can be due to a fall. So, that can be an accident. If the intracerebral hemorrhage is due to hypertension, it is a natural. If the intracerebral hemorrhage is due to an assault, then it is a homicide. So, out of these circumstances, such as accident, suicide, homicide, natural, only on natural deaths, a GP can issue a medical certificate of cause of death. So, what is natural? The term natural is intended to indicate that the death is caused by an internal, not an external event. For an example, a person dying from complications of pneumonia, infections, cancer, stroke, heart disease is listed as having died of natural causes. From the medical point of view, a causal connection between an external event and death is absent. So if you look at uh, this cause of death, myocardial infarction is a, the effect and the coronary artery thrombosis is the cause. So there is a cause-effect relationship. So what is natural in legal point of view? If you look at a 60-year-old diagnosed patient with hypertension and ischemic heart disease, developed a sudden chest pain, shortness of breath, following a robber entering her home. About an hour later, she was brought to the hospital by her neighbor. She was pronounced dead at the OPD. Now here, if you look at this scenario, she would have got 
and ischemic heart disease. But the circumstance is there is an external event that is she developed this ischemic, uh, she developed, she got the exacerbation of this uh, ischemic heart disease following this uh, event. So there is an external component to this. So this is not natural in this case. This can even be a homicide because uh, during this uh, fight and flight mechanism, uh, she can have increased heart rate, her blood pressure can go up, which can contribute to her death. So this will not be taken as a natural death in this context. So a death is natural if it occurs wholly depend on legally relevant external factors. So, and what is unnatural death? An unnatural death results from external cause, typically including homicides, suicides, accidents, medical errors, intoxications, overdoses. So, in, in unnatural deaths, uh, you cannot, GP or a medical practitioner cannot issue a medical certificate of cause of death. Now, uh, as Sri Lanka Medical Council guidelines says, you can issue a, a death certificate only on natural deaths. Uh, the uh, Criminal Procedure Code Act Number 15 of 1979 says, in suicides, animal attacks, deaths due to machinery, sudden deaths, uh, an inquest should be held. So in accident, suicide and unnatural uh, causes, they should undergo an inquest. Now, <clears throat> if you look at uh, criminal procedure court section number 21, it says every person aware of any sudden unnatural death or death by violence of any death under suspicious circumstances or of a body of person being found dead without it being known how such person came by death shall in the absence of reasonable excuse the burden of providing such a proving which shall lie upon the person so aware for with give information to the nearest magistrate or uh, the police station. Now, in uh, Criminal Procedure Code, section number 21 says, if anyone is aware of uh, any sudden or unnatural death, he should inform either nearest magistrate or the police officer. Now, here, we are, we are doctors and we are also ordinary persons. We can be... Uh, said as that we are also ordinary person. So during our practice, if we come to know any sudden death or unnatural death as ordinary persons also, we should inform police or the nearest magistrate. Indirectly meaning there should be an inquest for them. <clears throat> Now, we have discussed two components of the Sri Lanka Medical Council guideline. One is we should know the cause of death. The other one is uh, the cause of death should be natural. So the third component is doctor being the attending physician of the last illness which led to the death. Now, to give a medical certificate of cause of death, the doctor or the physician who was attending the last illness can give a uh, medical certificate of cause of death. Although according to Sri Lanka medical guidelines, the doctor should be the attending physician during the last illness, there is no clear legal definition of attend. Now what? In the Sri Lanka Medical Council, they have not defined 
what is attend what is uh, now if you look at the general acceptance it is generally accepted to mean a medical practitioner who has treated the disease during the illness that led to the death so if you are going to give a medical certificate of cause of death uh, the medical practitioner or the general practitioner who had treated the disease during the last illness that led to the death a medical practitioner is familiar with the disease medical history investigation and treatment that medical practitioner should also have access to medical records and results of the investigation now if you look very carefully uh, what is uh, so to give a medical certificate of cause of death the general practitioner should treat his last illness which led to the death for an example if the general practitioner had treated recently for a non fatal illness such as upper respiratory tract infection uh, osteoarthritis uh, backache he cannot give that as a cause of death because that will that is not fatal so in cases of a general practitioner treating for non fatal illnesses in those scenarios he cannot give a cause of death asita uh, i hope you got this point asita can you hear me can anyone hear me Yes, yes, we can hear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We can hear. If you if you have any issues, you can uh, text or you can uh, ask. Okay, you can. We can raise them. their hands. We can unmute them. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, can a GP issue a medical cause of death? of a patient who was under a gp uh, scare for simple upper respiratory tract infection i explained to you uh, he cannot because mm -hmm. this simple upper respiratory tract uh, upper respiratory tract infection is not a fatal condition so he cannot uh, that is not his uh, the last illness which led to the death so something else would have happened so he cannot give a medical certificate of cause of death to issue a medical certificate of cause of death the medical practitioner should treat the disease during the last illness which led to the death when the last illness that the medical practitioner had treated is a non fatal condition the medical practitioner cannot issue a cause of death examples osteoarthritis essential hypertension without complications uh, simple treating a simple wound in general practice uh, excuse me so sure. yeah uh, now if the cause of death is aging like 93 year old lady so can we issue then no no uh, any illnesses yeah now it's a good point you ask uh, there are some uh, points for that and some points against that for an example is aging a cause of death no because if you are going to give a cause of death you have to point out a disease that led to the death now for an example imagine now in our forensic practice also we get old people say 90 80 they were previously healthy but with time uh, they get debilitated then they are bedridden and uh, they get complications then they die usually either they get orthostatic pneumonia sepsis and things like that so if you look at a statistical point of view if you give aging we will be missing many good cause of death which is very important for uh medical statistics so 
in forensic practice also, we hardly give aging as a cause of death. You can give, but if you are going to give aging as a cause of death, it does not indicate the organ or the pathology that led to the death. That is one. The other thing is, we may miss uh, some cause of death because it's a just a general term. But if you look, um, I think the queen, they had given aging, but I think there are some other things that probably that they did not give, uh, like, you know, maintaining the confidentiality and things like that. But what they generally say is, we they don't recommend aging as a cause of death because you may miss uh, this, um, I mean, the diseases. Did you get my point? Did I answer your question? Mm, yeah, but uh, now the thing is, uh, like, uh, as I know, uh, the cause of death, we have to write in three lines. The one is the immediate sure. cause, yeah. and then the uh, it's like that. So most of Intermed the... What is... Now, first is immediate cause of death, then yes. intermediate cause of death, and underlying cause of death. Now, yeah, in indeed. some instances, you may have a single, uh, uh, that is the underlying cause. For an example, imagine uh, meningitis, bacterial meningitis. So, there is only single line. So, it is the underlying cause of death. But if you look at... Uh, Myocardial infarction due to coronary artery thrombosis. Myocardial infarction is the immediate cause of death. Coronary artery thrombosis is, is the underlying cause of death. You don't really need to have uh, write in three lines. If you if there is only one cause of death, you can write in one line. Okay, you can carry on. Uh, and uh, now, uh, like in in the cancer hospital, I saw several uh, death uh, declarations. They have mentioned in, as an immediate cause the cardiorespiratory arrest. That is also wrong. Yeah, because everybody, I think, uh, the, the cardiorespiratory. Arrest. Yeah, yeah, that is wrong. Now, in one A, that is the immediate cause of death. No, so it should be a now cardiorespiratory arrest is a mechanism of death. So you should not write that. Still, uh, okay. people yes. make mistake. So if you are going to write in one A, it should be the immediate cause of death. So, so if it is meningitis, then what is the immediate cause? There is only there is only one line. You can write back now in uh, bacterial meningitis. They will go into sepsis, things like that. So yeah, you like can write of... uh, sepsis yeah. uh, due to. Uh, bacterial meningitis. Yeah, like the thing is now, uh, like when it's come to the GP practice, most of the things are a uh, bit different than in the hospital setting. Now, yeah. for example, when while we are doing practice, the uh, one or two is coming and telling that amma honda te hitiya teega den dia anagota mukut nagiya. Then how can we uh, find out the how reasonable, like how correctly we can find the cause of death? She's yeah, very now, well. That is why uh, now to arrive at the cause of death, uh, it is like arriving at a disease. Say for an example, in your GP practice, to arrive at a diagnosis, you take the history, you examine, you investigate. Now in deaths, you do the same thing. So first you should take a proper history. What happened to her? Now, in uh, say for an example, if somebody has ischemic heart disease, they will say I had a, a chest pain, there was sweating and uh, while on the way she collapsed. So these points to a, a sudden cardiac death. So you have to, now that history and the diagnosis that you have should be in line with that. So then, if you have a past medical history, which is, uh, which uh, past medical history and the circumstances are in tallying, you give as a cause of death. For an example, I'll explain like this. Say a person has a diagnosis card of ischemic heart disease and the relative comes and says, doctor, 
uh, he is awaiting uh, coronary bypass uh, next month. But today, the patient developed uh, hemoptysis and died. So, are you given? Uh, are you, will you give a cause of death in that case? Did you get my I question? Think, yeah, I think it's not clear, right? Uh, because no, no. To... For an example, somebody has a diagnosis of ischemic heart disease, developed yeah, a hemoptysis. Yeah. So, in ischemic Sorry. heart disease, there yeah, is it... no indication for you yeah, to yeah. develop There's hemoptysis. No connection. No. Yeah, no correlation. That is true. Yes. So, the diagnosis, if you are going to give a diagnosis of ischemic heart disease, then it is wrong because in ischemic heart disease, you won't get hemoptysis. So, in yes. that case, yes. You do not know the so that's why his the disease condition and the the history that they are giving should tally. If that tallies, you can give a medical certificate of cause of death. Understood my point? Yes. Uh, the last one I will ask the last question for the time. Uh, so I, I used to write uh, because even even the cancer patient, there are you know uh, the several systems are involved if the cancer is invading uh, okay. all the systems, and then okay. I will write uh, multiple organ dysfunction. Is it correct? The now, reason for now update, for cancer, organ. instead yeah. of that, if say for an example, uh, a patient who is having a breast carcinoma, multiple secondaries. Instead of that, you can write as an underlying cause of death like metastatic uh, uh, adenocarcinoma of the breast. That is fairly enough. You don't right. really need to write multiple organ failure or things like that. Then immediate cause? No, that becomes the underlying. Then if you write in one, uh, one line, that becomes right. the underlying cause. All right, no need, uh, no need to fulfill all three lines all the time. Yeah, right? now that is fairly enough. Say for an example, ah, right. in those patients, either, you know, they, they, their appetite is lost, so they get dehydrated, sometimes they get sepsis, things like that. Yeah. But in carcinoma, you can write as an underlying cause. If you write only one line, that becomes the underlying cause of death. So okay, always right. the last line is the underlying cause of death. So if you have three lines, the last line is the underlying cause of death. If you have only single line, then it is the underlying cause of death. Understood? Okay, right. Right, thank you. Now, we will go back to this attending physician. So, if a medical practitioner has not been directly involved in the patient's care at any time during the illness from which they die, is an unattended death. For an example, GP may not have treated this patient, but you have asked to come and certify the death. So, if you have not treated this person, you can give you cannot give a medical certificate of cause of death. So in that we call it unattended death. So there was no doctor treating this patient. So you cannot give a cause of death. Understood my point? Asita? Yes, yes, Prasan. Good. A, a medical practitioner who just confirmed the death without treating the last illness, which led to the death, cannot fill the B12 form. As he has not treated the disease and has no as to inform the police to arrange the inquest. This indirectly means that if the doctor has attended the disease only during his terminal movements, uh, moments or, or was called after death, he cannot issue a medical certificate of cause of death as he will not have certain knowledge of the set. Um, I will disturb yes. again. There was, a question, there was a question, uh, Prasanna, that uh, was uh, directed to me earlier, yeah. earlier uh, yeah. that B12 form is, uh, is it available for all the GPs and where they can get it if it is okay. available? I will, I will discuss about that. Uh, uh, in all the Pradesh uh, Lekam Karel, there is death registrars. They have it. In Matale, they have it. It is a printed document. Uh, 
uh, you can get it. It is free of charge. And uh, if you look at uh, the Sri Lanka medical guidelines, it says sometimes we see general practitioners writing this cause of death in a letterhead. That should not happen. The guideline clearly says you should issue with B12 form and you should not write in piece of papers or A4 sheets also because it's a legal document. You can get it from uh, uh, birth and death registrar. I mean, I don't know registrar general. I don't know how to get the data and they have it. Thank you, Prasant. Okay. For an example, in an outpatient department of a hospital, the medical practitioner would confirm the death when the disease is brought dead. The OPD doctor cannot issue a medical certificate of cause of death as he has not treated the disease. This is the reason why all the OPD deaths end up being an inquest. So in the OPD, that doctor is just certifying the death. He has not treated this person. So he cannot issue a medical certificate of cause of death. So the medical practitioner informs the police enabling them to arrange an inquest. However, in emergency treatment units, ETUA or preliminary care unit of the hospital, when the medical practitioner has treated the disease during the last illness, which led to the death, the medical certificate of cause of death can be issued if the duration of stay in the hospital unit uh, is even is less than 24 hours. Now, in an ETU, for an example, say a person develops a chest pain. So he comes to the ETU. In the ETU, they uh, take an ECG and ECG shows uh, changes and the patient develops uh, sudden uh, arrhythmia or goes into heart failure and dies. In that case, even the patient's stay is less than 24 hours, the ETU can issue a medical certificate of cause of death. But in the OPD, if the deceased person is brought dead, he cannot issue a medical certificate of cause of death. Even looking at the previous uh, records, the books and things, we can't issue, right? In the OPD, Asita, no. Because he has not treated. Now, in the GP setting, because you have treated me, so you can look at his past medical history and arrive at a cause of death. But GP has not treated this person. So that is the difference between GP and the OPD doctor. Understood? Yes. So what the practice is uh, wrong? Yeah, OPD, Mashan, you cannot give a, a medical certificate of cause of death. Yeah. And sometimes because the OPD seen, doctor uh... is just certifying the death. Yeah, we have seen even district medical officer or the officer in charge that of the wrong. Yes. For an example, Asita, you forget about OPD. Say yes. you you are the GP and a person is brought where you have not treated. That is it. Then also you cannot give a, a medical certificate of cause of death. Yes. Even they may have a diagnosis card, but mm. if you have not treated, you can't give. Right. The treating doctor to withdraw the end of the Yes. So if uh, if GP is not willing to give the death certificate because he's not treated, then what they can do? Now you have you have to ask now for an example like this. No, they are asking from us. So if you are not giving this, so how can we uh, confirm this and what is the further? Then how can we advise? Yeah, yeah. What I will tell you. Now imagine. Say you are in a, a city as a GP and uh, this patient has a cancer and uh, but you have not treated. Okay. So yes. they, uh, they either bring the dead body or you are asked to go there and confirm the death. Okay. You can yeah. confirm the death. Then as there are out of these components, you are not the treating doctor. You have not treated this patient. So you have to ask for an inquest in this case. Okay. In the inquest, even without post-mortem, the coroner with the information of the from the police can issue a 
uh, certificate. Understood? Yeah, then the, yeah, so that means I can do the death confirmation, but not issuing that the is certificate. True. That is true. If you have right. not so I'm printed... ordering a, uh, so that means not using the B12 form, I have to order the inquest. Yeah, uh, you, you just inform the area police. Uh, that is the inquest. Yeah, inquest. Yes. You uh, should, excuse me. Sure. Prasanna, you just said that uh, you should uh, inform the police. Is it our yeah, duty? You can, or... you, you can inform. Uh, Even as a GP, you, you can inform. Yeah, we can, but is it a responsibility or is it uh, like a must? Ask them to go and inform the police. Yeah, yeah right. they, now what is... in. Yeah, it's like this. Now, if you look at uh, Kakirava, Asita knows the police. So they will just give a call. If you know the area, you usually know the police. And you now by telling the police, it now for an example, the relatives may not know the uh, telephone number, they have to go. So I mean, that will don't think as a burden, but uh, if you do, can't give, that is the option available. So we can send to the send, we can ask the relative if the body is available at your GP setup. We can uh, direct it to the hospital. Yeah, one option is <coughs> sending this body to the OPD. Okay. Now the other option is say you went to a home and you certify the death. Instead of sending that body. Now, yes. for an example, they have to transport that body in a hearse to the OPD. Then the police have to go to the hospital. The coroner has to go to the hospital. Instead of that, if the body is at home, if they go and inform the police, the police will come with the coroner to the home, do the uh, scene examination, then they can give it instead of taking the body to the hospital. Understood my point? Yes. For an example, yeah. imagine um, how much they have to spend on the hearse to take the body to the hospital, then to bring back to the funeral home, you know. Samaneng api lazy at a GP practice but even if the death is at home. Uh, you can uh, ask, you can either inform or the, ask the relatives to inform. So, what if, can uh, be if, done? Yeah, if I go for a home visit uh, for to confirm the death, so I can yeah. confirm and if I have any suspicions, can I order inquest and come without sure, issuing? Sure, sure. We will, we will discuss those points. Now, to say suspicion, what do you mean by suspicion? For an example, if you know this patient and if you know this patient had a uh, diagnosis, diagnosed disease and if you, you, the GP knows the relatives, the background and maybe he may have taken treatment from you recently, then you can give it. To say suspicion, you have to have certain things like now, for an example, even a person who has ischemic heart disease may be uh, assaulted. So, in those scenarios, you have to give the body. I will. There are five components of the Sri Lanka Medical Council guideline. So, I will discuss that component further. So, you have to give the body. Then, you can have some information from the relatives. If there is still suspicion, then you can ask for an inquest. Otherwise, for a uh, for a death where you can give a cause of death, you have to give. Understood? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, we are getting a lot of Excuse cases. Me. I just have yes. a question. Sure. Uh, if I am treating the GP for that patient for a longer period of time, I would say sure. like if it's a patient with ischemic heart disease, I am in follow up him for a longer period of time. Sure. Uh, then I went here. Uh, he just brought to the, my place, and I 
confirm the bread at the death. Death, yeah. In that instance, can I issue the this DC? Okay. Confirm so, death. what do you mean by longer period of time? That means, means you uh, have I seen have, this patient uh, one year before. Yes, for a longer ah, okay. period. So, okay, now we are discussing that component. So, in the Sri Lanka Medical Council guideline, they say. If you are going to give a medical certificate of cause of death, you have to treat the disease recently. Okay? So, I will discuss that. A doctor has to treat has to treat this disease recently. So, can a GP who had treated the disease for heart failure for six months ago, but who was not attended by GP recently, issue a medical certificate of cause of death? Although to issue a, a medical certificate of cause of death, the medical practitioner has to treat the disease recently, the Sri Lanka Medical Council guideline does not define the duration of treated the disease recently. The medical practitioner uh, treated the disease recently indicates that the patient was under the medical practitioner and knows the extent of the disease, complications, etc. Guidance issued to doctors on certifi certifying the cause of death in England and Wales has clearly defined the duration as 28 days. So if you look at some countries, they have defined this uh, treated recently. If you look at England, they have said 28 days. So if the GP had treated this patient on the 29th day, you cannot issue a certificate. Thus, in England and Wales, when the attending physician has not seen the disease within 28 days, the medical practitioner would inform the police, enabling them to arrange an inquest. This time limit of 20 days, 28 days is applicable even if the individual is a regular patient of the doctor and was suffering from a non-chronic illness as the cause of death may still be different. This patient may have come to you continuously. But during the last 28 days, if you have not treated, you cannot give care. Now, that is the issue. In Sri Lanka Medical Council uh, guideline, they have not defined this. Uh, treated recently but my suggestion is if you have may, may if you, you can even adapt the guideline of England I mean that is not bad because if you had not treated him recently the cause of death may be something else so but there is no hard fast rule in Sri Lanka but say if you have treated this patient for one Aurudda Kwagena Mangita Hondai you can think, but eight, uh, one month you can give but that is my view. But Sri Lanka Medical Council guideline has not defined that. Understood, Asita? Right, thank you, yes. Shashika also asked uh, that he has continuously treated Kiradamai. He said uh, Prasanna, that uh, he has uh, one month time, he has uh, seen the patient uh, Regularly at his GP practice. Oh, so, him and make it done. England will like 28 days, so you can uh, one month can two days again, so you can. But have I eight a good act ready now? You better don't give again. Okay. Okay. If you had not seen this patient for six months, better not to give. Right. So if we are giving the medical uh, the death certificate, Prasanna, yeah, having, having the uh, obligations and having having the justification, the reason that uh, I know the family, I have been the general practitioner and the family family physician for the whole family. So sure. I am obliged to give a death certificate as well as the medical certificate. Yeah. So if I get get the responsibility of recently being seen him or seen her, yeah. can I still give and take the responsibility? What are the implications if I am not proved that I have not uh, treated the patient recently if I am challenging the court of law? Yeah, now for an example, it's like this. Now, in this is a guideline given by Sri Lankan Medical Council. 
ಹರಿದೆ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಲೋ ನಾವು ಗೈಡ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಸಿ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಅದರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಬಿ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮಿಸ್ಕಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಯು ಬಟ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಗೈಡ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಫುಲ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ವ್ಯೂ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಫುಲ್ ಸೋಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಸಿತ್ ನಾವ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಾಸಿನೋಮ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆಟಾಸ್ಟಸಿಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಶಿ ಕಮಿಟ್ ಸೂಸೈಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಂ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಮ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಕಿಲ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲ್ ಇನ್ ಡೆತ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಗೈಡ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಫುಲ್ ನಾವು ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಇನ್ಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಆಟಾಪ್ಸಿ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಅರೈವ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ರೊಬಬಲ್ ಡಯಾಗ್ನೋಸಿಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಿಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ಏಕ ಹರಿಯಟ ನಿಕಂಗಾರ ಮೇ ಅಪಿಟ ಮೇ ಮಲ್ಲೆ ಅತ ದಾಲ ಬಲಂಡ ಪುಲು ಅಂಕಮ ತೀರ್ದಿ ಮಲ್ಲೆ ಎಲಿಯಂ ಬಲಲ ಅಮಾರು ವೆಟನಾಟ ವೆಡಿ ಅರವಿದಿ ಹೊಂದಿನ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಫಾಲೋ ದಿಸ್ ಗೈಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಬಟ್ ನೆವರ್ ನೋ ನೆ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ವೇ ಆ ಸಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಡೆತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಟಾಕ್ಸಿಕಾಲಜಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಹೈ ಡೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಗೋ ಟು ದೂ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಯು ನೋ ಎನಿ ಅದರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರೇಷನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದೀಸ್ and uh, also there's a role for the gram nirajari right sometimes yeah, that is true yeah that is true declare declare the death like no the confirm the death rather yeah. and then we might give a declaration of probable cause right uh, but then i think in the law within the law uh, there's a role for the gram nirajari they can issue something saying that this is a natural death yeah so what is the role of the gram nirajari okay. can now i will uh, you ask an uh, i mean an important question now imagine a, a person who is having a malignancy instead of coming to a gp they can go to the gram nirajari and gram nirajari can uh, release this body okay that is very easy way so the body is at home the gram nirajari knows uh, because they are from the they are town hometown and they know the uh, relatives they know the uh, person and they can give it that is true but uh, it is that that can be done uh, in dikka okay now when it comes to death certification if you follow this five uh, rules of this guideline it is very easy for you for an example you should know the cause of death it should be natural and you should be the treating doctor and you have to treat the fatal illness and you have to treat this is treat the person recently and you have to view the body so those are five uh, six simple things if you follow that the chances of you making mistakes uh, is very low so my suggestion is sometime now as professionals we can satisfy everybody you can be a ice cream seller now for an example some people 
some uh, medical staff may scold at me you know they will say uh, the uh, jmo is very strict but it is very good as far as we um, minimizing some of these hidden homicides i think these guidelines are mainly written so that by mistake some of these hidden homicides can be detected that is the main reason i get your point because being a gp you know these patients for years and you are like friends you know sometimes you may be invited for their birthdays and you are very close to them but still if you follow these guidelines i mean that would be good and that would minimize some of these mistakes got my point in the girl yes Hello? sir yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually, we have to develop that skill of explaining, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To patients, uh, uh, this is the reason that we I cannot give. Yeah, yeah. Best thing is now these days, I mean, many of them. I'm not referring to this uh, the rural areas. If you look at cities, they know English. So if you keep this guideline and describe them, I I mean. Uh, most of them would understand, you know, if the Sri Lanka Medical Council has a guideline, clear guideline, you know, I mean, they would um, obey that, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I think that guidelines mainly to uh, hospital setting, not for the GPs. No, even for GP. No, that now, is very difficult no, to... Uh, now, look at this, I will go back to this guideline. No, the thing is, as Indigo also told, like uh, we have. Uh, see, see this guideline. Now it says you should know the cause of death. It should be natural. And you are the treating doctor. And you should treat the last illness and with the body. Even GP, it is the same. Yeah, good. Uh, like, still, I have that problem with a very old, 93 year old lady. Uh, with no problems, just uh, uh, like sort of a bedridden like and died. So how can I give the cause of death? Other than in the that age? case, really speaking, you can't give cause of death. Yeah, other than the because age, you do not the... know that. Yeah, then how can I write that? Then no, you can't write that. If the or if she is an old lady, she was bedridden and dies. If she is previously healthy. She had not gone even to a doctor. That means you do not know the cause of death. Isn't that so? Then, uh, do, do I have them to go to the police and get the thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. inquest law. I will explain you the inquest law also in the latter part. Inquest law a component. If you do not know the cause of death, you have to ask for an inquest. Uh... But yeah, that is the law. But, are... but we, my understanding is like, you know, if uh, because I'm working in the government hospital, I work in cancer hospital, even sure. in the ICU, ICU, yeah. if the cancer patient died, we don't know the cause. Sometimes uh, after uh, like autopsy, we can find. So how can we, uh, if they died at home and coming and ask us to go home, visit and do that, how can we get the cause of this very un uh, unreasonable thing like, uh, nah, like nah, that is all true. the now, reports and everything why... available it's everything available they can't find it and uh, jmo has to go and uh, find it then how can we suppose if we can say correctly uh, like this is the cause of death oh now if i if i explain you further if you look at this birth and death registration act they say you should give the cause of death to best of your knowledge. Yeah, that I noticed. Yeah, I noticed it is that, not yeah. 100. You, you should now imagine you have a, a cancer patient. She is not eating. There is loss of appetite. She is emaciated. Skin is dry, dehydrated. Eyes are shrunken. So you know everything. So in that case, yeah. you can give a cause of death. Isn't that so? Yeah, that I can give, but I'm sure. still thinking about that 93-year-old lady. What can In I give? In that, you can't give. Uh, say, for an example, if in your practice, 
if they bring you a previously healthy, even she is 120 years old, she had not give, even gone to a GP, not measured the blood pressure, not checked the blood sugar. So that means she is she was previously healthy. It and doesn't matter whether she is 100 or 110. So and in that have, case, previously yeah. healthy means you do not know, you do not have a diagnosis. So you can't give a cause of death. Hmm. Asita, do you yes. give cause of death on those uh, old people? Uh, really speaking, uh, theoretically, we should not. You can't. Theoretically, yes. Of course. Now, theoretically, it may have been a practice of you, you know, being sympathetic and you give it. But really speaking, you do not know the cause of ah, death. Yeah, in that's those. right. Yeah, Asita. that's the real idea. Yeah, that's the real yeah. idea. Yeah. There can now, be murders, the Buddhika. Yes, there can be murders. Mame, 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 I am showing you this guideline. Yeah, Understood. because we are bound to other family members. Ne? Sometimes uh, that, uh, yeah, that's a very difficult situation actually at that time. That's why I want to verify it. Have but I, anyway, yeah. this, this old lady would have died of natural death. 100% sure. Yeah, yeah, suspicions yeah, yeah, are not right. natu But for an example, for Sri, in Sri Lankan statistics, ape stroke statistics hari adui. You know the reason why? Most of these old people die at home. So the grama sevaka then a cause of death come out than old age. No can no be no city. Dirga kali na roge. And that will I. Oh, mamma study a kakara, me me grama sevaka then a cause of death. Fifty percent the in over. You think ape strokes, then why is that old people die of strokes? Ne? I think up a medical statistics will strokes are you doing report to Aladdin. Eka yetu. So, what I'm telling, like, uh, yes, like when they call us to confirm the date, then everything finished in stroke, anything we can't find uh, yeah. unless we are treated earlier. That's why, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Is, yeah. If you are not treating, better not to give here. Yeah. yeah, if you are not treated, you can't give. If there is no proper diagnosis, you can't give. Yeah, Prasanna, um, yeah. thank you. Now, it's almost 10 and 10. Um, uh, should we continue? Or, uh, it's Matana, issue ne, if you have a shoot, you can Shall we uh, go till 10.30 then? Hare. Shall we go till 10.30 then? Hare. Shall we go till 10.30 then? Yeah. And there was another question. It's not relevant here, but uh, it's a medical legal. Uh, yeah. One person asked me, uh, because uh, some time when we give the medical legal, one person asked me, because sometimes when we give we are real practitioners and we are GPs, uh, family physicians. When we give a medical certificate for a leave, some he uh, head of the department uh, refuse that and ask to get it from DMO. Yeah. So what can we do? Because, uh, in the court of law, now, all the medical certificates are accepted. Now it's like this. You have to be very careful when you give uh, medical certificates. One. Because... I also have done some GP practice before and they will ask uh, a medical certificate just to uh, get a leave. Okay, so if this owner of the business or the person or the head of the department has some suspicion that this is a bogus medical certificate, they might challenge and they have challenge also. And Whatever the uh, medical certificate that you give, it is not accepted in courts also. So if say if somebody has a court case, he cannot go on that day. He had he has to get a uh, medical from the government hospital. Now I have encountered certain instances where uh, a GP or private sector doctors issuing. Uh, medical certificates and the courts challenge it and they send the person with that certificate to the JMO uh, <laughs> to you know investigate further so you have to be very careful unless you know if it is really needed uh, <laughs> you have to give a proper uh, uh, medical certificate because it can be challenged as it Right. So uh, and they can challenge also, Asita. Hmm. 
we we feel I like it is like. not an insult to a gp don't think it as an insult to a gp but now in really in in practice i mean you all are very close with the relatives and you all would do that even yes. without charging a fee yes but uh, you know they can misuse that medical certificate that is mm -hmm. the point now once a gp was called to trincomalee courts uh, he had kakirawa he, she gave she is not no more there she she died a uh, very old gp yeah she gave a medical certificate uh, and that uh, what person was uh, under warrant uh, and uh, she had to go to trincomalee courts on her yeah yeah yeah. Expenses. yeah that's the thing and for an example if you go back to the history i think uh, uh, I mean, um, maybe about 10 years ago, I, I cannot remember the exact name of the uh, the member of the parliament. He underwent a circumcision and gave a medical certificate to courts. And the courts refused it and produced that uh, me member of the parliament to the Colombo JMO. And the Colombo JMO gave a good report saying that he can come to courts even after circumcision. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if yeah. if the uh, it depends on the magistrate, they might even write to Sri Lanka Medical Council, you mm. know. So that's why you have to be careful. <laughs> Understood. Yes, Prasanna, carry on. Yes, thanks. Okay, so we will go to the other part. So, uh, the last one is the doctor has to weave the body. Now, uh, why do you have to weave the body? For an example, a person may have a diagnosis card of ischemic heart disease, but he can be killed or he may commit suicide. So, uh, you have to examine a dead body. You have to weave the dead body. So, it's a head-to-toe examination. Uh, ideally speaking, you have to remove the clothes and see. So you have to see especially the uh, neck areas, you know, neck. You have to look for in manual strangulation, you can get nail marks. In ligature strangulation, you can get, you know, ligature marks. There can be contusions over the neck. And uh, sometimes they commit suicide. So you may find... Uh, multiple tablets, capsules in the oral cavity. So you have to uh, examine the mouth. Now, especially there can be head injury. So you have to palpate the <clears throat> scalp area, look for bumps and things like that. So even this old ladies, old people, they can be, there are enough and enough elderly abuse. So they can die of trauma. They may have a diagnosis card of a disease, but they can die of even elderly abuse. So you have to examine the body and exclude trauma. So, so those are the five components of the Sri Lanka Medical Council guideline. That is, it should be, you should know the cause of death. But knowing means with, you know, that there is an, element of error but you should know the cause of death it should be natural and you should treat the uh, the patient and you should treat the <laughs> fatal illness and you have to use the body so those are the components now i will discuss little bit about the inquest law so in the inquest law it says if a person had committed suicide killed by animal machinery or accident or he has died suddenly or from a cause which is not known, he should undergo an inquest. So this is the point that I want to give. I don't know the name of the doctor who answered. The, he said 92-year-old old person dies and giving a cause of death. So in that 92-year-old old person, if you look at this inquest law, so it says from a cause which is not known. So if you do not know the cause of death, if you do not know the cause of the death, so you can't give a medical certificate of cause of death and ideally you should ask for an inquest. Hope you understood now.
the doctor who answered asked the question yes that's buddhiga ah yes yes buddhiga so in yeah, this yeah. inquest law <laughs> look in the third line it says if a person had died suddenly or from a cause which is not known that means you can't give a cause of death okay yeah yeah all right okay, now yeah. it is true that it is very difficult to tell them you know because you know them for years and years but you <clears throat> you have to explain you know yeah like only thing we have to take the risk and do the job i think <laughs> because he, okay. he, because these are sometimes you are practicing generation to generation we know them no we, yeah, we know yeah, the yeah. other family members very well not that particular lady and we don't know how she died or not and uh, but we have to give that is a one of our duty and when they get uh, but there's a risk anyway um, in theoretically yeah things are okay and how about uh, if the elderly home there's a date then ask us to con confirm elderly home the same yeah. same same principle applies if you yeah, have treated yeah. if you know the uh, i mean if you are treated recently and uh, you examine this is i mean this sri lanka medical guideline can be applied to any way even in the hospital uh, elderly home hospice See, uh, this drama seva came to the scene uh, because of the corona yes is it no 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 if you look because at this birth and death registration birth and death registration act it is about 7 it's it's about 70 years old so in this birth and death registration act the gram sevaka part is there it is not uh, during corona that came in uh, yeah. nowadays when we ask to go to gram sevaka we, we we don't know the patient in their request we ask to go to gram sevaka then the gram sevaka say no it should come from the doctor he is not a clinician he is saying how can he give the cause of death or something like that then we have to no. thing is like after we giving the dc the may if somebody make it i mean make the problem i mean make a complaint only the problem comes na yeah otherwise it won't happen anything yeah <laughs> but but don't think don't think in that way so you have to be very careful deaths now i so mean i can like, what we practice is like even if we are not that known people then when we confirm the date we are asked is there any suspicious of death as from the family members so, so all okay is, then we are giving no it is like this are hora ge amma gen pena ana wage ne if 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 this person was killed by the now we have come across many instances where children kill their parents to get the land or to get the property so yeah. we are asking like poragi amma gen pena no that's why yeah. i say this death death certification is a real i mean we have to be very careful mm. it does not mean that you have to refer every case to the coroner you mm, if, yeah. if there is a diagnosis proper diagnosis if the history is uh, suggestive of and if you have treated if you have seen jolly well you have to give mm. that's my view but yeah, actually you... we got to know a lot of things today uh, from the guidelines and the law yeah uh, because we actually these... we can discuss with the patient actually now we can discuss it that's true yes, that's true. Know. yeah yeah thank you in buddhika i mean there are some now for an example i usually collect guidelines in a fi file now yeah. there are some guidelines that you must know and you should have it in a file so these are the yeah. guidelines yeah yeah okay yes that's fine right. now uh, who can issue a medical certificate of cause of death so it says a medical practitioner so they can be either a doctor with an mbbs degree or apothecaries 
can you issue a medical certificate of cause of death to a neighbor, relative or friend? Now, Sri Lanka Medical Council guideline or circular or law has not barred from issuing certificate of medical cause of death to a relative, friend or neighbor. But <clears throat> the guideline says you have to treat the patient. Now, we all know in practice, though you may have not treated, you have given you have given enough certificates for relatives. You have given enough certificates for neighbors and you have given enough certificates for uh, friends. But really speaking, if you have not treated, you better don't give a medical certificate of cause of death. <laughs> Understood my point? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you look at some countries, they have barred doctors from giving a medical certificate of cause of death for relatives. Solely because of conflict of interest. Now, uh, if you have time, you uh, there is an England general practitioner who had killed about 300 of their patients by giving morphine. <clears throat> I mean, some of these laws in England are very strict because they did a lot of changes after this because this general practitioner started killing patients. So they came to know that, you know, uh, these things can happen. So they have changed uh, the law and uh, that's why the, their law is very precise. They say if they say 28 days, it is 28 days. I mean, it is very easy to practice when you have such guidelines, you know. Now, in Sri Lanka, everything is grey. Uh, if you think, uh, if somebody who is uh, from Kurnayagara thinks, ah, this is this, he will practice that way. If somebody is from Colombo thinks, this is this way, he will practice that way. So, I mean, if you, if you work in other countries, I mean, the guidelines, law is very precise and clear, and it is very easy for you to practice. That's my view. Now, can a medical practitioner issue a certificate by uh, charging a fee? Now, <clears throat> you can't charge a fee. Even if you go by your car to their house and you have to spend some money on the petrol, the birth and death registration access, you can't charge money. <clears throat> I hope you know that. Asita, did you, yes, did you yes, all yes. knew that? Hmm. No, normally we don't charge uh, from a yeah. patient, but uh, there are people who are coming and sitting on our <laughs> the GP practice uh, asking for a medical certificate for a leave. Ah, that is that is okay. I'm not talking about that Asita. I'm talking about death certificate. So yeah. if, if you are giving a death certificate, even if you have gone say <clears throat> from your GP practice, you have gone about ten kilometers away and uh, certifying the death. But mm. still, mm. even if yeah. you have gone by your car, you can't charge money. That is, it is in the law. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, can you refuse a medical certificate of cause of death? For an example, say, um, Asita, you have this patient who is having a, a breast CA and uh, you have treated and one day you you have a headache or something. I mean, you say, no, I can't give. Now, if they go to, if they challenge you, in scenarios where you have to give cause of death, but if you had refused, uh, they can, uh, it is an offense and you are liable to fine. I hope you, everybody knows about it because nowadays people know about these facts. So, you know, sometimes they will, uh, you know, make complaints and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, my view is you have to give, try to give all the time where all these five criteria of uh, Sri Lanka Medical Council guidelines are met, then you have to give it. And if they, if they are not met, ideally you should ask for an inquest. Okay, so we can stop at that and uh, if you have any other questions, we can uh, discuss.
<laughs> and if you all know, we can, uh, I mean, we can have another day and uh, whatever. Asita? Last one question uh, before we conclude. Um, sure. Sana, uh, nowadays, uh, you know, with the uh, much economical crisis and all, now GPs are attending various, uh, their own uh, practices are developed. So, Sometimes uh, some GPs are very uh, famous for surgeries. Uh, people even with the cut injury or a road traffic ac accident, maybe a sword, uh, so cut by a sword or something, sharp uh, object, uh, they go and uh, get the sutures and uh, the treatments are done. So what are the other uh, process afterwards the GP has to do uh, to safeguard himself? Okay, now uh, uh, you can treat by law, they have not, there are no laws saying that uh, a GP cannot treat uh, a violence. Okay. Now, the second component, now always uh, patient's life is first. Uh, the medical legal matter becomes the second. All right. Yes. So, you can treat, you can suture. But when it comes to uh, the patients, uh, say for an example, if you suture a wound, then if they go to uh, file a case, sometimes the components of the injuries are altered and the JMO will find difficult to give an opinion on the injury by looking at an altered wound. Imagine a stab injury. Yes. Now, if uh, after examining a stab injury, we can give certain opinion about there how many uh, edges were sharp, whether one edge is sharp, the other, whether the <laughs> both edges were sharp whether they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, serrated edges and things like that. But if a GP had sutures the wound before seeing by a JMO, uh, that, can be, that can affect the patient. So one good thing that you can do is, you can take a photograph before suturing. You can clean the... Uh, the wound, the skin edges, take a photograph. Then after suturing also, you can take a photograph and keep. Sometimes these patients may not go to JMO and may file a case. So in that case, these have not happened, but what I am saying is possibilities. <clears throat> so the courts might request a GP about the wound. He might uh, request a report or he might, the magistrate or the court might request an opinion from you. So in that case, either you have to be thorough with the examination of wound. Then you can go and say <laughs> the edges are sharp and the depth, I mean, when you look at the, uh, the wound uh, depth, you didn't see, uh, you know, tissue bridging. So this is a sharp weapon. <clears throat> so in that case, uh, as a general practitioner, you are a, a registered medical officer. So any registered medical officer <coughs> by law is accepted to give some opinion about the injuries. That's why once uh, post, uh, I mean, post intern MOs who are appointed as DMOs can start autopsy. Mm. So according to Sri Lankan law, any doctor who has an MBBS is capable of enough to give certain evidence about medical legal matter. So same principle applies to GP. GP can give opinion. But to give opinion, you have to have facts. So it, I mean, there is no law saying that you can't treat these wounds. You can treat, but you have to either, you know, write down things, keep notes. Otherwise, 
I mean, we all know that uh, you all don't keep records. So after about three, four months, they will come and say, doctor, uh, you sutured me and these are the injuries. Then the court is asking for, you know, opinion, then you will be in trouble. Hmm. You can read, but always keep a record. Asita, I hope yes. you got yes, my thank point. You. Thank you very much. So, since the time has um, passed, um, we, we had to finish by 10, but uh, it was very nice and interesting, insightful overview uh, and in-depth sometimes about the uh, judicial medical practice. Thank you very much, Prasanna, my good friend and uh, old batchmate. Uh, it was very nice evening. And good night to all of you. Prasanna, your certificate of participation and as a resource person will re receive tomorrow in the morning. Thank you, Asita. Good and, night, all. Uh, okay, good night. Thanks very much for participating in the very active discussion. Yeah, thank you. Very valuable thing.